everyone watching us here at the Well of Wellbeing. So glad you're tuning in today for our um, next episode with Sheldon Burrow. Hi, Sheldon. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you, Sophie? I'm all right. I'm all right. Thank you very much for agreeing to do this for us. So, yeah, I, thank you. It's an absolute honour and privilege. Thank you. Today we have Sheldon speaking to us about his journey with mental health and well-being and how he has got to this point to where he is today. Um, and um, it's going to be a re really personal and authentic story about himself and his journey. So uh, we're all excited to hear what you're going to tell us, Sheldon. So Amen. let's start off with Sheldon is a youth leader at, J at Destiny Church Glasgow and um, he is an all-round sound guy. He just is an amazing person, just gives so much of himself to everyone he works with um, and um, just a really pa passionate person. Um, he also enjoys powerlifting and plays rugby, which is really cool because I, I love playing rugby as well. Um, a great sport. <laughs> so Sheldon, tell us a little bit about your journey. Oh, well, where do you want me to start? Do you want me to start from the beginning? Um, yeah, all the well, way, all the way to start. Beginning would be a, a great place to start. So um, I was born and raised in Johannesburg, South Africa. Um, I have a bit of a dysfunctional family. Um, my mom and dad had divorced, um, which was obviously at a young age quite a traumatic thing. Yeah. Um, my dad sexually abused me as a kid, um, which I, I only revealed, uh, I, 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 it was a secret I had held for nearly 22 years. And um, so, yeah, I'm sure we'll get into that at some point in this, this, this chat. Um, so just remember, I come from a dysfunctional family. Um, so we went to school there, school was great got a bit of bullied in school um and then my granddad left my grandmother which was another traumatic experience so from that my mom and gran moved here to glasgow because my mom and gran were born here in glasgow mm. um yeah it was it was something um it was a massive move and that had quite a an effect on us because we, we came from a place where we had friends to having like no one met, meeting family we've never met before, yeah. you know. Um, went to school here. Um, during high school, it was quite a really rough time in the first three years. Um, I was picked on for my size. Now, I was a big boy. I still am, you know. Um, I've accepted that I'm big and large and in charge um <laughs> i like that <laughs> and um yeah so throughout school um i go into the wrong crowd a little bit near the end of my school and um yeah so i was bullied from the first three years i was bullied um because of my size you can that there was horrendous things thrown around um i collapsed in school one day and apparently I was dead. Wow. So everyone was going around saying I was dead. So that was pretty traumatic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, school life was, there was a lot of bullying, a lot of name calling. Um, and through, I don't know if this is going to be one of your questions, but I, I went through um, counselling as a kid. Um, I'm not. I'm not discriminating, but it, they they opened a can of worms, but never really fixed them again. So that kind of left me very vulnerable. Very um, okay. I'm not speaking about my emotions no more. Yeah. That's it. And that and that continued throughout life. Leaving school, um, started drinking, started taking drugs, started hanging around the wrong people. Had very racist views. Um, yeah, it was it was a bit chaotic, you know. Um, a lot of um, I wouldn't say there was a lot of violence, um, but there was there were there were there was some violence in there, you know. So everything was just chucked into one massive pot, and it was just stirring 
yeah. Um, low self confidence. Um, yeah, really dark thoughts. Um, always try to please people. Yeah. Very, very much so. Really try to please people, and that only kind of dropped my self confidence even more. You know, um, had an eating disorder. So I was eating too much. There's comfort eating, and then there's like an extreme of that, and that's where I was at, you know. Um, and then, how far do you want me to go? <laughs> you can keep going. <laughs> where you know, where um, you would say that you then started to seek help, and then that journey continued. Yes. So um, I actually started seeking help once um, I became a Christian because I had very bad um, experiences when I was younger with like um, counselors and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. Um, so I gave my life to Lord, which was wonderful five years ago, 6th of December. It was my sister's birthday, my sister's birthday. And I'll never forget it. Um, and from there, the first year I kind of, I, I drifted away from God. And um, yeah, a lot of things happened within that year. Um, started drinking again, started taking drugs again. Uh, got into a relationship which wasn't healthy. Um, and once I'd finished a year later, on the Sunday, on the Saturday, I'd seen people getting baptized on the Sunday um, in a in a hotel. Sorry, no in the south side and yeah I, I i i didn't go into work that day i i just went and said right i want to get baptized i hadn't seen anyone in a year i just want to get baptized and i got baptized that day and from there it's been a journey because there's been a lot of there was a lot of things brewing in me god was doing amazing things in me he was trying to chisel away at all the bad stuff you know and one of the things was that i hid for a long time was that my dad abused me as a kid you know, um, I hadn't told anyone this. And one of our pastors, um, Andy Brady, was like, Sheldon, I think you'd do great in counseling. And at first, I didn't like to show I was weak. Yeah. Because where I came from, it was men do not show they are weak. Yeah. Because yeah. then it makes you less masculine. Yeah. And I had lived with that. And it was it was something something I'd lived with all my life. You never showed no emotion. You never showed any weakness. Um, so I, I was very hesitant to, to do this counseling thing. Um, so a little encouragement from a very good friend of mine. He's like, Shells, I've done it. Okay, it's hard. It will suck. But it, it will... It, it will um, let the light into the darkness. Yes. It will, it will start to take away things and you'll learn things as well. He says, just remember you've got a whole family around you. Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah, 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 whatever, man. Like I didn't, I didn't trust people. Like I, I, I didn't trust many people, mm. you know. Um, and I went in and, you know, Pastor Dave Thompson um, always says, trust the process. If I was to ever hear that, see when someone says, Sheldon, you've got to trust the process. And I used to say, I was at first, the, the first year I was in counseling, it was just the counselor trying to draw stuff out of me. Yeah. Because I was holding this in and I was holding it with all my might, you know, and I, I didn't want to let that go because it was a fear. It was the fear of rejection, the fear of judgment, the fear of, um, you name it, it was there. Like I didn't want to be feel vulnerable because of my past experiences. Of course, yeah. And obviously, I didn't want to show I was weak. But my, the counselor who I had sat there and showed patience, and showed love, and showed grace, and showed um, mm. like I'm not just here just to hear your story. I'm here to, to walk this with you. Yeah, yeah. Alongside. The Holy Spirit. Sorry if that's too Christianese, but that, like that—that's 
all I remember him saying, he says, it's not, I'm not just doing this to, you know, to take off. I'm here to walk this with you. Yeah. And um, I praise God for the counselors that um, are within our church, you know, um, not discrediting any other organization. I really appreciate what counselors do. My second year, everything just came out, just, you know, like all the deepest, darkest secrets that I was thinking, um, how I felt, what happened to me just came out like, and it, it was a choice to let go. Yeah. It was a hard choice, but I knew if I wanted to find inner peace and inner contentment, I, I had to let it go. Yeah. And it was hard. Like, no doubt. my attitude changed. Um, not not in, a, in like an aggressive, but it just kind of changed. I was more quiet. And you, you know me, so, right? I'm not a quiet person. I'm quite loud. I'm quite annoying. Yeah. You know? Um, I would be annoying, but... <laughs> no, I am. But, I mean, even I can admit it. Um, yeah, and I was just quiet. I was laid back. I didn't want to... I think my biggest mistake was I didn't want to be around people. Mm. Um, just because, okay, I've exposed myself. I'm in a vulnerable state. I don't want other people to see that. Yeah. But throughout my time in counseling, um, it taught me quite a lot about myself. And it taught me about um, my biggest thing was trust. Um, I read somewhere um, you've got to learn to trust when you've been betrayed. It's not a hard. It, it's not an easy thing. Yeah. And and I've started to learn to do that, you know. Um, but it's also helped me tell my mum that you know, listen, you knew nothing about this. But hey, I just want to let you know that, you know, my dad said sexual abuse me as a kid, you know, and okay, me and my mom, we cried. Um, now, I cried in front of your mom was never, never a manly thing, you know, but I, I, I thought, you know what, if you're going to see how much God has changed in me, then, you know, I have to tell you. And we sat and we cried and we laughed and, you know, um, yeah. And it felt as if like the weight had just come off my shoulders. Yeah. Completely. And I remember the first time sharing that, what I've just shared with you, to the church. It was at a Hope and Healing meeting in Renfrewshire. And I was asked to come share a testimony of healing. And um, I said to my counselor, I just feel my heart that I have to share this. Mm. And man, I, I, I held that mic and I gripped it with all my might and you could see my hands shaking. Like I came away and I was like, my hands, all, like I, I was just so nervous. And that kind of brought an, another sense of release. Not because I wanted to say, oh, look at me, this happened. But what God had actually done, he had actually healed me from that. And you know what? I'm not ashamed of it. It's, it doesn't hold claim to me anymore. It doesn't affect me anymore, you know? Um, and then from there, it's just been, from that, I've, I'm, I've, I'm starting to love myself a lot more because there was no love about myself. Like, I used to despise myself. I used to look at him and think, why the hell are you even living? Like, look at the size of you, man. Like, who the hell is going to love you? Mm. I, I used to go through this routinely in a day. I also forgot to mention that I used to, um, I went from overeating to um, doing, going to the gym. So I found a new love for the gym and I had some wonderful guys helping me um, doing weights. That's where I got my love for weights. You know, if I can't run, I'll just lift heavy. That's my thing. Just yeah. saying. Yeah. That's why I love rugby because as a big guy, you don't need to run much. You just need to have the strength. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um i used to a friend of mine who sadly went to be with jesus um 
at the time before he was saved. He took a lot of fat burners and he introduced me to them. And so I went from extreme eating to extreme taking fat burners and not eating at all. Trying to change the way I was for vanity. Yeah. You know, and if 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 like I'm not discri- I'm not discriminating any bodybuilders, platform performers or anything like that. It was just that's why I did it. Because I wanted all the attention. You know, I wanted this, I wanted that. Um so I went for that. Um before I was a Christian, could I just say. Um <laughs> Even if it was after it's yeah. done. <laughs> no, no, yeah, but no, I, but it kind of, I'm starting to love myself the way I am, you know, and I'm, I'm doing, I'm not doing the gym like nine times a week to hide the pain away. Yeah. I'm doing it like three to four times a week, maybe five times a week because I love going to the gym. Yeah. You know, yeah. purely to get healthy and, just love what I do. Like I say, I, I enjoy powerlifting, so there's a lot of training in that. I love the discipline. Yeah. You know, like you've got to practice, you've got to get this, this, and you've got to get your technique right. You know, the same as rugby. Like you know, so if like if, if you're practicing a throw out or passing or scrum, you've got to do that for repetition. You've got to, you've got to, you've got to get the technique in. It's and that's why I do it. Well. It's discipline. It's training the mind to exactly yeah controlled and yeah. It's it's really powerful. Sport is so powerful in in just shaping how you think and how you face day to day things. It's nothing to do with how well you can pass a ball. You you can train all day and be really poor at passing a ball, but actually it's built so much in you that you know life can't take away from you. So yeah, exactly. And um, that's that, that that that's and where I am right now is you know um I can say fully if it, what hadn't been for the counselling that I had received. Um, and by God's healing hand, you know, like I wouldn't be healed from my past. You know, um, the main thing that really altered who I was was my dad sexually abusing me and hiding that for 20 odd years. Yeah, that must be difficult. You know, what a weight to carry. You know, and I'm free from that. You know, I'm healed from that. You know, um, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you about it you know, so openly, like, and, and, you know, it, 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 and it was a hard thing. It was so hard. Like, I'm not going to lie, but, but as much as I hate saying this saying, you got to trust the process, you know, <laughs> they would be so proud, <laughs> you know, um, it's funny that because I'm doing his, his, his H and C counseling course at the end of this, well, start of the next academic year. You know, and I've done first and second year um, of Destiny College. And in first year, they've done counseling. So automatically, I was still holding on to this, this whole weight on me. And I used to just go, you say, Sheldon, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing great, Dave. Just skip by me. I used to hide. I used to hide when Dave used to come into class. Not because his class was rubbish, because I didn't want him seeing there was something something niggling at me and then he unpacks it the way God has given him that amazing talent and anointing on that. Um, yeah, I, I, I used to despise days of class, but now I, I understand and I have, a, I, I have a newfound love for what he teaches, you know? Like now that I've, I've I've went through counseling, now it's just so free, and I can be like, okay, I want I want to I want to get to that place. I want to do this course. Yeah, you know. And you just want to share that with others who may be in the same position, and give them that freedom that comes with bringing things into the light. Um, yeah. Like um, I know it's a bit Christianese, but I think it's so relevant in any in anything as the Bible says. Like take if you are in the darkness, come into the light, and everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, it is so true when when you are in a place where you can't see the end of or out of you just you just go into the spiral. But once once you start speaking about it, once you bring it into the open, there's nothing to hide and there's nowhere to hide. Yeah. It actually comes with such a freedom. 
and um, that is just yeah. And doing. I like what Pastor Craig said one time. Sorry, sorry. No, just no. I just when you were saying that there, Pastor Craig um, in person, he he said, um, if you've got nothing to hide, you've got nothing to fear. Yep. Yep. You know, and that stuck with me throughout my time in counseling. I like through even my darkest times. It was like if you've got nothing to hide, you've got nothing to fear. Yeah. You know. Um, That's powerful. Sorry, just when you said that, it just came came fun back to me there. You know. That is a powerful statement, though. That is a powerful statement. How many of us walk through life fearing the little things? Yeah. Things that probably wouldn't make a difference. Like I have a fear of heights let's say, or I have a fear of spiders, uh, practical fears. <laughs> um, and it's these little things that you don't think too much of, but when you say it like that, yeah, if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear. It's, mm. wow, that's, that's powerful. Someone needs to hear that. Someone needs Amen. To... I, I wanted to ask, um, at, before, before you got saved, at different points of the way, did, did you wish that someone could have signposted you to some help of some sort or, you know, just said something that, that could have pulled you out? Or do you think that that wasn't something you would have wanted to hear? It's oh, a good question. Um, so like I said, um, I was recommended to um, counselling um, when I was younger. And like I said, they unpacked everything and never really sort of tried to, I don't want to say mold or pack the worms back in. They just kind of left it open. Yeah. You know, so I, I was, I, I, I think at the time, I don't think I would have appreciated someone saying that to me because I would have went, well, what's the point? Because I was still hurt from um, the past, you know, and I was quite stubborn. If, if you hurt me, I held that. I held that for for a long time, you know. So, yeah, I, I I don't I don't think I would have appreciated someone saying that mm. because, like I said, to show that you're weak wasn't quite a manly thing. So I thought if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it my way. Like I'll do it how I know best. Yeah. Which obviously was the wrong the wrong way, you know, because it kind of led me to drinking even more drugs. Um, going out nearly every day of the week, lying, cheating, stealing, you know. I take responsibility that I did that, okay? I'm not discrediting that it was me that did it, but I, I, that, that's what that came from, you know. That, that's where all my actions came from. It came from being hurt and wanting to numb the pain. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, yes, yeah, so I don't. I don't think I'd appreciate it at the time. No, okay, that's fair. Sometimes I ask that question because we think, you know, if you know someone in your life that may be going through a really difficult time, is there anything that we can say to to them that you know they may be receptive to? But sometimes you psych yourself out of talking about it because it is, as you say, a can of worms to open that you may not be trained or um, know how to deal with, but sometimes a, a question is all that it takes to help someone but other times it's just not appropriate or yeah. well received and that can have its own repercussions of people not wanting to speak about things and um, so just wondered if that was something that you also felt at that time um before yeah, no, it would, uh, sorry on you go no 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 carry on carry on yeah um, i was just gonna say before before you managed to get um proper uh, counseling um in church um did you ever feel like taking your life at any point oh, yeah yeah um i used to have a a jot a, a book a little notebook um i like to write things um i still have one of the one of the, the books but there was one where I was just like, what is the point? And I actually called it on the job. I was like, what is the point? What is the point to me living? Yeah. If I expose who I am, I'm just going to be laughed at. I'm just going to be 
judged. I'm just going to be rejected. I'm just going to get picked on. I'm just going to be called a liar. I'm just going to be called X, Y, and Z. What is the point? Like, I'm going through hell. Like, I don't see any way out. Yeah. You know, and that's why I put, what's the point? What's the point to my life? And I, I remember writing one thing. Um, what is the point when I'm holding something so, so dark and deep? Would anyone, would anyone even care if, 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 if I was to walk the streets right now? And just, just as I'm speaking, I, I, can, I, can just, I can just see me writing it, you know? Mm. Um, yeah, it was... And it, before my, my niece and nephew were born, I, I went out one night and I thought, you know what? Loads of drugs available. Stuff it. I'll just OD. They won't care. No one will give a crap. I'm sorry if I'm using like dodgy words and stuff like that, but like, you know, it's, it's. I think it reflects what you were feeling at that time, you know. And I, I just felt like I was nothing. Like I was like, I was worse than a piece of dirt on someone's foot. Mm. You know, sometimes I would feel as if not, I was invisible. And I used to wish I was invisible. I used to think, would anyone even notice that, you know, I'm, I'm even still around? Yeah, well. So what does it matter if I wrap a, a belt around my neck and hang it from the ceiling just in my room? No one would give a crap. People would cry and then that's it. They'll move on. You know? How, how did you move past that? Oh, man. How did you start to find a, a, an answer for the question of what's the point of life? Honestly, it didn't happen until I got saved. You know, I, 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 when I gave my life to Jesus, you know, and, and that, that, that's not, that's me just being very, very honest with you. You know, and there was, there was times when I first gave my life to Jesus that um, I still kind of felt, well, what difference does it make? I'm just a number in a church. Yeah. You know, so I, I knew of God, like my mom and grand, they're Christians. Okay. And my mom, God bless her. She always says, son, you are loved. You are loved. You are loved. And my mom showed so much love. So did my grand. I mean, they raised me from, they were like my, my grand and granddad, my mom and dad, all wrapped into one, you know? Mm. And they always showed so much love. But when I was feeling the way I was, I was rejecting that love. You know, I was rejecting it like, well, whatever. Okay. Why? Why? Why do you even love me? Like I'm nothing, you know. And I'll never ever forget this one night. I said that to him. I said, "I'm nothing, mom." She went, "No, you're my son, and I love you a lot. I love you dearly." Mm. That that night always stuck around with me. So I know I'm going off in tangents, um, but back to your question, it was it. Was, Generally, it was only with with great a great friend who walked alongside me in a, like my darkest time in church. I had it not been for the constant prayers the constant challengings um, even though half the time I wanted to deck him you know those are the best every, you know every every time he challenged me I just wanted to like me it's not what I wanted to hear but it was what I needed to hear and then from I call this guy my brother okay because he was like Sheldon look I think you'd benefit from counseling so it was, it was more after 
I, I came to know Jesus and I really, really wanted to, I, I'm, we're all getting old. We're not getting any younger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I lived with a lot of weight on my, well, on my shoulders, you know, and that's how I felt, Yeah, you know, weight on my shoulders. And I, it's, it, there's only so much I can carry before it starts breaking me. Yeah. I I was a I, I was breaking like left right and center. I'm not gonna lie. And it had if I hadn't been for that that friendship, that's when I knew I needed I needed help. Mm. And for someone to admit that, it's hard. But it's it's a reality that we need to face. That sometimes we all need a little bit of help. Yeah, you know. Well, it was actually a message um, from one of the pastors that had come to Destiny. And it was all about purpose. He says, God's got you for a purpose. But what weights have you got on your shoulder that you don't need to be carrying? And I think it was from that, from that day when I heard that message, I knew. I just knew that it's time to start releasing stuff. Albeit it taken two years, but in that time, slowly small things, even the things you thought weren't relevant, they were weighing you down, started coming off, you know. And that that that's how I kind of got into, you know, seeking counselling and stuff like that, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, when you so your your story is so powerful, and I think. Um, I can't even imagine what I would do in that situation and you know when when you were facing like crippling anxiety and depression and you know that comes with the experiences that you've had how how did you find motivation to just face another day okay so as a kid I suffered with anxiety and depression to the point where I wouldn't even go out in my I wouldn't go out my front house yeah. I had to get a taxi to school every single day. You know, um, when I was in school, I I had friends, but I, 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 I used to sit myself quite a lot. As an adult, I have, I, I, I've always had, I used to have anxiety mm. um, about the smallest things, you know. Um, how I found motivation was um, through music, actually. You know, um, yeah, I, I used to listen to a lot of, um, I call it feel good vibe music. Um, it was just something one of my, one of my good friends had mentioned to me. Um, she listened to like reggae ska, ska reggae and punk. And I got into it and I started listening. And you know what? It made me feel good. But as soon as I went through that door, game was a bogey. You know, it was like, okay, I'm getting out. Okay. No, I'm not doing this. I'm going back in. I missed a lot of friends' birthdays, christenings, weddings, because I had this anxiety. The anxiety was being in a room full of people okay and you don't know if people are reading you right right now Mm. that was my anxiety my anxiety was what if i start getting slack of being massive so it was all that so my motivation was well go to the gym even yet that was a challenge um Obviously, you've got all these buff guys with the six packs and the rip muscles. Um, but slowly but surely, I kind of got into it. Started to get in love with it. Fell in love with it. Um, again, music was a big part to play with that. I think if I'm focused on an artist and their lyrics, I forget who's around me. Like I forget who is around, so that's why um, I'm constantly looking for new people that um, have something to say, and not just your generic 
rubbish, you know what I mean? Something with like proper, something to say. So I focus on the lyrics. What are they actually saying? Oh, I can relate to that. By the time you know, I'm in the gym, done my set and back home before the anxiety had even thought about kicking in, you know? Um, at one point I was on antidepressants um, when I was a lot younger. In fact, I was around 22, I remember. Yeah, 22. And I went on them and, yeah, it it was what it was um, at, to the point where I was like, this, this is me showing I'm weak that I'm taking these tablets. So I came off them and never went back on them. So in conclusion to what you'd asked, music and the gym, I would say kind of helped me release those anxieties, you know. Um, even when I feel, I don't feel so good about myself, you know, we all have days like that. It's all about music and, you know, just shutting the world off for a while, you know. And for me, it's been, it's been worship, you know, because it, it takes away from me and it puts emphasis on the glory of God, yeah. you know. Sorry if that's too Christianese, but that, that's, that's how I operate. It takes away from me. I'm like, God, you know, you're amazing. You're, you're a healer, provider, protector. Um, and I found quite, I, I, yeah, that's my, that's my way. Music is so powerful and um, you don't realise the power of the words that you're saying and speaking over yeah. when you sing songs. I remember going through my um, iTunes before before Spotify was a thing. My iTunes nice. playlist um, a couple of years ago, and um, no shade to Taylor Swift, but I didn't relate to her music, you know. Um, and I like the tunes are good, and sometimes when songs play, I just sing along, and I don't realize how I've memorized these lyrics. How do I know the lyrics of a song that I've barely heard? I know what's going to yeah. come next. And, and then you realize actually subconsciously you're listening to music that's playing and you're absorbing the emotions that the person's singing, singing about and, the, and you're singing that over yourself. So if someone is singing about heartbreak, if someone's uh, singing about depression and suicide, you're singing that over yourself. And yeah. release, that is just wrapping yourself more and more into this, into this tight bubble of being upset and and you know it's so important to choose the right music and surround yourself with good vibes <laughs> for that. Yeah, good vibes, vibes always. Yeah, yeah, that's that's so cool. That's um, I I, re I relate a lot to that. Music is my thing. Yeah, when you drive when you clean when you cook. You just uh, just doing everything. Just do it with music. And yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, is there something you would say to a person who, um? maybe walking alongside a friend or a family member going through this, what would you say to them um, that can help? First of all, males, never ever tell a man to man up because that there, nice. that will break them. I've been in a position where I was told that and it broke me to a thousand pieces. And I've been the one saying that to someone else and seeing them break. Never, ever tell a man to man up. Um, I know I'm directing this straight at, at men because um, I've, I've seen a lot of, being in a, in a, a male-orientated sport, I, I've seen a lot of it to man up and, you know, never show weakness. Listen, it takes a man to cry. Men, never be, never, never, ever be ashamed to show your emotions. If you need help, reach out. And I know it's hard. Don't walk with someone that tells you to man up. That's the most toxic thing you can ever say to someone. Um, be kind, be humble, be there for them. You know, be there for them. If you say you're going to be there for them, you make sure you're there for them. I went through life where people say, "Yeah, I'm going to be there for you, mate." And in my time of need, it's 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 it, it, no one's been there. 
mm. you know um yeah be there for people never say man up show your emotions just know that you're loved reassure the person you're walking alongside that you are loved tell them you are loved yeah one of my friends um very close to me um had went through a very dark time and i know he wouldn't mind me saying this um and he was like do you know what i just feel rubbish i don't want to be here no more and all and i know it's not as easy as this but all i said was you know what man i love you for who you are you know you've been a great friend to me a great brother i will walk alongside you no matter what And she says, yeah, I've heard this before, Charles, you know, as soon as I, you know, not that I want to flake out or I, I don't, I get really depressed. I don't want to hang out. Um, people just, 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 just never really offer their help anymore. Mm -hmm. I says, well, all you need to do is pick up the phone, man. My phone's on 24 seven. Call me anytime. And he has, you know, what? and I, I, he, he's in a very good place right now not just because of me but because there was that okay there's always someone going to be there for me yeah. and then i was like well as a brother once said to me maybe i think you should go do some counseling and he did and he benefited so much from that you know so walk alongside people say what you mean encourage them yeah if they don't come out all the time or they don't hang around or pick up the phone don't think that they are they don't want to know you no more it's just they're going through a hard time or even just send a little text to them hey dude you know what thinking about you just know that i'm here for you yeah it's just simple things like that that can reassure someone mm. you know Definitely. so yeah that, that, that would be my kind of top tip um, top tips yeah yeah that's that's good that's powerful i think love at the end trumps everything and yes love trumps hate every single time come on yeah. i love that it's it's difficult to just pay lip service to someone who is just has no reason to push on and people know when you are saying words and you don't mean it you yeah know, you know it's like how you say how are you in passing and no one expects someone to say oh i'm not feeling good yeah. if you said that it would just be wrong because they're not expecting to hear that you're not feeling well or you're you're upset it's just how are you how are you and that's not the kind of thing that people who maybe struggling would need to hear they you just need to be really genuine and there and loving even if it means talking about nothing right and yeah. just be there yeah that's so good that's so powerful i think everyone can learn a bit from that to be a better friend to anyone yeah. in their lives yeah. can i just add one more tip yeah um something i found really really cool um find an interest of the person you're walking alongside um it might not be your cup of tea so um i had a friend who was into like uh, star trek right not my bag at all <laughs> okay but i thought if, if if that's the way he communicates and that's how he kind of because he's a big sci-fi buff he loves his science fiction he can name every person in star wars lord of the rings all them things <laughs> like, i'm gonna try and connect with you so i kind of i done a bit of research on like star trek and stuff like that and went oh did, have you seen this episode where so and so did this this and this and that day kind of opened the door you know it kind of just went, oh well wow okay you actually know okay some of the stuff you were saying i didn't know i had to go research it just so i knew it's talking about but yeah just find something they love doing and and or an interest they like or certain music and just talk to them about it if it makes them happy then talk about the things they love being happy about you know 
Yeah. Remind them. Yeah, um, we had an interview with Arlene, who is a CBT um, psychotherapist, and she was saying how you need to inspire them with hope and install hope yeah. in their life. And maybe this is, this is exactly what you're saying, that you need to give them a reason to move forward. Whether yeah. it's something as superficial as a hobby or, you know, just like, let's go out for food. And um, that would be just giving them a reason to take the next breath, take the next step, get out of bed the next day um, and talk about hobbies. Yeah. Things that they love doing and people that are important to them. Um, I would say it's like protective factors. What stops you from doing something really devastating? Um, and that's important to kind of remember when like there, there's things that if weren't in your life, would you say, would have made you take the next step if you know weren't there to protect you from yeah if stuff. i didn't have the, the the music that i had i didn't have the the access to the gym yeah 100 mm. percent. also if i didn't have the the sort of the friendship that i had at the beginning of my walk yeah, absolutely. Mm. The reason I say walk alongside someone and encourage them is because that's what I have received, you know, from my brother, you know, yeah. encouragements. Like he knew nothing about rugby, but did he go out and find interesting things to say about rugby? Yes, he did. You know, oh, he it? went out his way. <laughs> yeah. Because we kind of listen to the same music in a way. He kind of like, oh, Charles, have you heard this guy before? Oh yeah, check him out, man. So it's just because he knew I love music. I used to love, I love writing. We kind of, you know, so that's why I just wanted to raise that point. Mm, that's a really good point. Very practical tips. I think everyone needs to hear that. Um, whether or not you may be struggling, I think it's just a tip for being a better friend. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for sharing that, Sheldon. That was so personal. And I, I can't imagine how it must have felt to, share that with someone and be vulnerable when you first were and even now um obviously it's a public platform youtube and people may have questions for you so um do you think it's okay for them to leave comments in in the youtube section and we, we can have a chat at a later time if they've got any questions absolutely yeah please i'd love to i'd love to answer any questions you have yeah so i'm, I'm sure walking this is walking through a journey like this is a continuous process and some days there will be ups and downs. So I think all, all the stuff that you've said has been really helpful. If anyone is ever feeling like you're alone, remember you're not alone. And if anyone's watching this, that may feel isolated in this time. Remember that there is always a hope to look forward to the next day and people that are counting on you to, you know, um, be there, be their friend and people who love you so, so much. And ultimately, yeah. we have a hope as Christians that there is a God who walks th with us through our darkest times um, yeah. and a God that went through hell to get us back and saved and walk in freedom. So you're never alone and you're never not loved. You're always loved. And um, we would love to hear from you if you have any questions. And um, if you're going through a tough time, we have a Destiny Hopeline number you can call. I'll put the details at the end of this talk. Um, and lastly, thank you so much for listening and do subscribe and keep in touch with all that we have going on here. Thank you. If you would like help with this or any other topics that we discuss on our videos, please don't hesitate to reach out. We have a Destiny Hopeline, which is available nine to nine every day and ready to talk. And the number is 0333 triple zero nine zero nine or you can email the address shown below which is wellbeing at destiny church.com and we would love to address your concerns and just have a chat with you about anything that is worrying you.